you can fix and heal insulin resistance. You can heal diabetes. First, we gotta learn more about that. Welcome to Metabo Launch segment two. Uh, this is actually my favorite. This is what I, I call the endocrine portion of, of this, this class. Very, very important to understand how hormones and how our body works. As I had mentioned before, I really believed that as far as my weight problem for life, um, I gained the weight, I, I, I lost it, I'd, I'd gain it right back. And I just really believed, uh, one, that I had a slow metabolism. I believe that was given to me by God. <laughs> I later found out that that is not true. Also. I believed that I was a food addict. My background, I used to be a Mormon, and Mormons don't drink alcohol, they don't smoke, they don't do drugs, anything like that, but they do the worst drug of all in high amounts, and that is food. My drug of choice is definitely food. And I believed that something was wrong with me. We've all you know, experienced that, go to get a glass of water at night and, and get tempted to, to open up the pantry and and have snacks and cereals. And sometimes I would black out <laughs> seemingly and I would just demolish a box of cereal. After a great day of eating well and training and complete discipline, and at 11 o'clock at night, I'm destroying a box of cereal. And I had to figure out why, how did I solve my problem? If I was an addict, what did that mean and how do I fix the problem? So really to go next level, we need to go through the, the important hormones that happen in our body because what I've learned is that we all as humans, we're all just creatures of hormone. Most of the decisions we make in a day are actually hormonally inspired. And so one of the things we haven't talked about is leptin. Now leptin is a reward hormone, similar to dopamine, but actually leptin is a precursor to dopamine. Leptin is involved in food in our mouths, okay? So when we eat chocolate, we get a leptin release. Now leptin leads to dopamine, which dopamine is, ah, that tastes good, that feels good. That, and that creates what's called satiety. Satiety, or sounds kind of like satisfaction, because that's what it is. When we have a, a satiety hormone, and we get a leptin release and a dopamine release, we get satisfied. So like we talked about with leptin being a reward hormone, you can actually become resistant to leptin. And that's exactly what I was and most overweight or fat people. What happens, and I, I can equate this to an experience where I, I love peanut M&Ms. And you know, one of the things I had to tell my wife over the years is no more M&Ms out on the counter because I, I don't care how many times I'm walking through the kitchen, I'm grabbing some damn M&Ms, okay? Throw them in my mouth. And it would get to the point where I would grab bigger handfuls and bigger handfuls, and I would just be mowing down a whole handful every time I walked through the kitchen. That's because I was giving myself so much leptin that my cells stopped being sensitive to it. So I had leptin resistance. So now I joke with my friends or people that are overweight. I say, did you know that food tastes better to me than to you? And that's a fact. It's, it's a fact because it's hormonal. When I healed my leptin resistance, which we'll talk about later, I could eat two or three M&Ms and it would be a virtual flavor explosion in my mouth. I almost, almost stopped me dead in my tracks. Whereas before it would take an entire handful to get that same leptin and dopamine release. With all these gurus out there, you, we're hearing so much information. And, and one of the things that I think is the most misunderstood and you know, people need to understand is what is insulin, okay? Insulin for one is a storage hormone. It has a very specific job. It's not a bad hormone. It's actually there to save our lives and to help us manage our energy usage throughout the day. See, insulin quite simply, now, I, I, Teaser, I'm going to teach you right now in the next two minutes more than most gurus understand about the hormone they talk about so much, insulin. You'll hear glycemic index and all that BS. Well, let me, let me help you understand right now what insulin is supposed to do. Insulin is a key and its job is to unlock fat cells and put sugar in it, okay? It is created by the pancreas and when there is blood sugar, you know, AKA carbs, sugar in our, in, in our system, it sends out the insulin to go do one of two things with that insulin. Our muscles are actually storage compartments for energy. 
when sugar gets put, when glucose actually gets put into the muscle, that, that's stored, it's called glycogen. Glycogen, as I like to say, is jet fuel. The energy that I'm gonna use right now, if I'm gonna drop down and do push-ups, is glycogen. Now, the muscles can only hold so much glycogen. It's like a cup, and when that cup gets full, it spills over. And where does it spill over? Into the bloodstream, okay? So now we still have too much sugar in the bloodstream. So insulin takes that sugar, it unlocks the fat cell, and it stores it right here. See, belly fat, all it is is stored energy. It's actually a good thing, you know, the, 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 the brain's number one function is survival, which we'll talk about later. But by storing that, that energy, I mean, next week, if I'm in the Sahara Desert and I'm starving, I got plenty of fuel. I can live for a long time on my body fat. See, belly fat is not bad. We're gonna get into the differences in segment three of belly fat versus visceral fat. But suffice to say, insulin's job is to put sugars into the muscle and then into fat cells. Now another hormone that this one is not discussed very often, very fascinating hormone, I call it a magic hormone. It's called ghrelin. You can think of it as growling because it is the hunger hormone that is actually secreted by the walls of the stomach. Now when the stomach gets shrunk up, those walls secrete ghrelin, the hunger hormone. And that signals us to, to eat or to renutrify. Well, ghrelin does some, some incredible things. Most of us have heard of uh, HGH or human growth hormone. Now, if there is a fountain of youth, that would be HGH. HGH does everything. It tightens our skin. It helps us heal from injuries. It helps us sleep, helps us divide and create more muscle cells, which is the number one sign of longevity. Again, we'll talk about that later. Well, growth hormone is it. And as we get older, it just steadily goes down and down and down. Well, ghrelin, what makes it magic is it actually signals the pituitary gland in the brain to make more HGH or growth hormone. So truly hunger makes you younger because higher growth hormone levels equals younger. Now we got to jump around because I want to touch on a few hormones to where we can bring it all together. I promise you, we got a plan here. See, I want to talk to you about the ultimate pleasure hormone and that's dopamine. We've all heard of that. Dopamine is actually made by the pituitary gland as well. And dopamine is a reward hormone, an accomplishment hormone. So when we run a 5K, we get a dopamine secretion. When we eat chocolate, we ultimately end up with a dopamine secretion. Dopamine is the best drug. Matter of fact, most of our drugs, you know, the illicit drugs out there, they, they create dopamine. So it really, the center of addiction has everything to do with dopamine because we can get dopamine from a lot of different sources. We can get it from food, we can get it from alcohol, we can get it from sex, we can get it from drugs. We can also get it from accomplishments, from working out, from a good pump at the gym. The science on what happens, dopamine secretions when you're actually working hard is incredible. But dopamine is the drug. So it kind of made me question, it's like, okay, if all these things create dopamine, well, are we addicted to alcohol or we are addicted to dopamine? Are we addicted to food or are we addicted to dopamine? And you can see, it, you can relate just about any of the bad things and the good habits. And I mean, shoot, you can even see the people that are addicted to the gym and they can't miss. They're getting a dopamine secretion every time they go. And so yes, they're addicted to dopamine. Now, there are good addictions and there are bad addictions. And I think we know what, what's, what's what. But I learned that I truly was an addict. No different than an alcoholic. You know, it was always interesting to me in my religious background, how we would persecute those doing drugs or alcohol, but I gotta, I gotta put it out there. 30 years ago, Time Magazine called the Mormon church the fattest church in America. Why? Because you take away drugs, alcohol, coffee, all those things, and you're left with food. And in my instance, when I was excited or happy, I ate. When I was depressed or anxious, I ate. When I was bored, I ate. It doesn't matter the, if I was celebrating, we would eat and I would eat a lot. My kryptonite was actually Chinese buffets. I love me some Chinese buffets and I would go all the time, but I wouldn't just simply eat till I was full. I would eat till I was sick. 
sound kind of similar to what happens with an alcoholic where they can't have four or five drinks, they gotta have eight or nine. That was the same thing with me. And it was a compulsion. And I almost, like I said, it was almost a semi blackout where I would, I would just keep going. And by the time I hit that pain threshold where I was like, oh my gosh, I can't take anymore. I would walk out of there just sick. And it was the same thing every time, as, as if I could not control it. Something that's very, very important is to understand that it doesn't matter what substance we're using to get dopamine. All these, these, these chemicals and these hormones that are created, we actually can build up a resistance to them where they don't work anymore. Very important. So let's talk about insulin, okay? Insulin, again, created by the pancreas, even healthy foods we eat cause an insulin secretion. If we're eating all the time, it's insulin secreted all the time. And at some point, our cells have so much insulin in and around them that they actually become resistant. What that means with insulin is that key that's supposed to unlock the fat cell. You know how you cut a key so many times where it really doesn't fit in the lock? Well, that's what's happening. We're talking about the beginning of diabetes. Now, all of us have a score. It's called an A1C. This is a score that tells us how sensitive or insensitive we are to insulin. What happens to overweight people and, and people that are developing this problem is, is they're having such high blood sugar items, their carbs and sugar, that constantly they're getting insulin, 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 and eventually the insulin stops working. Insulin resistance isn't the only thing. So leptin is just like anything. Like I've already said, too much chocolate, chocolate doesn't taste as good. Too much scrolling on your phone, that's actually dopamine. You're getting dopamine sensation from being stimulated. You do that too much, and then you need to scroll longer to get the same dopaminergic effect. You know, the brain is actually genius. It, whatever we give it a lot of, it adapts to. Kind of like when you live next to a construction site and you hear all this, the construction noise for a few days, and then after that, your brain kind of tunes it out. Specifically, the, the, the problem with most of our metabolism is insulin resistance. Insulin resistance is very serious. The, 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 the higher it gets, that's, that's diabetes, which we're gonna talk about in segment three. Basically, the, the condition that most people in the United States have created, I mean, we have a huge, huge obesity epidemic. Over 40% of America is obese. And the, the statistics on childhood obesity are the real scary thing. As I mentioned earlier, I thought that God gave me a slow metabolism. He did not. And I love my parents, but it actually came from my parents. And most people with metabolic syndrome and, and or just being or struggling with obesity, they were taught bad habits. You know, it's interesting how uh, doctors like to ask, oh, do you have a history of diabetes in your family? Do you have a history of, of heart disease in your family? Do you have a history of cancer in your family? All three of those killers have been determined the number one cause of all three of those is what they say, metabolic syndrome. That's AKA obesity, diabetes, AKA food. So food truly is the number one killer in the world. And insulin resistance is the problem. If you are insulin resistant, you have a slow metabolism. If you are insulin sensitive, you got a fast metabolism. So as I learned about this, I went, holy cow, you mean I can actually have a fast metabolism? The answer is yes. And we'll get more into that, but don't get too far ahead of me on that, okay? But insulin resistance, the way you have to cure that is similar to the way you cure drug addiction. Some of you may know people that have used cocaine in the past. And, and it's true with, with anything, especially drugs, the more you use, the more you need. So a little bit doesn't work anymore and they increase their dose, they increase their dose. And eventually they have a full blown drug problem. Well, I know most of you aren't biochemists, but I think this is a pretty obvious question. So I'll ask it, how do you cure that person's drug resistance or drug addiction? The answer is, quit doing the drugs. Now you quit doing those drugs for a, a, a period of time, I'm sure they could go back and it would work again because your, your cells become resensitized to that substance. The same is true with the hormone insulin. One of the principles you gotta grasp is that we've been lied to. Cavemen didn't eat three meals and two snacks a day. They didn't have refrigerators, they didn't have pantries, they didn't have airplanes to fly them fruit from all over the world to get them their daily dose of fruit. That's also a lie, we'll talk about that later. 
but we are engineered very similarly to bears, lions, tigers. Matter of fact, we are the apex predator. <laughs> We're not supposed to graze. We're not cows. You know, sometimes the caveman would leave the cave to find food and he would be unsuccessful. He'd come back with no food. And our bodies are engineered to be able to do that. As we talked about earlier, this is stored energy. It's not a flaw. This is, this is a wallet. The example that, that I've been told I really like to use is the food we eat that's in us, the, the glycogen in our, in, our, in our muscles, that is what we refer to as cash in the pocket. When we have cash and I need to spend some money, or AKA use energy, I've got it, boom, boom, boom. But what happens when I've given out all my cash, I have to go to the checking account. Guys, this is the checking account. So doesn't it make sense if you were gonna engineer somebody, the, the body that part of the day we should be using the fuel that we're eating that's in our muscles, but when, but when we run out of cash in the pocket, we go to the checking account. And that's exactly the way it's supposed to work. You're supposed to use part of your energy in the day is food and glycogen and then the checking account. But, but in America, they've convinced us that we need to eat all day long. Well, what that is, is it's like a drug user using drugs all day long and eventually they don't work anymore. And when I say you've been lied to, diabetes is a $110 billion a year industry. And if you think there's a, a room full of smart people gathered around going, how can we save everybody money? Well, then you're an idiot. That's not a thing. Matter of fact, they're trying to maximize their profits. The reason this video will change your life is because you can fix and heal insulin resistance. You can heal diabetes. First, we gotta learn more about that. But similar to how to kick a drug addiction is to quit, how do we kick an insulin addiction? Well, we can't completely quit eating. So what we have to do is intermittent fasting. I alluded to that in segment one. It is the most perfect, and it's not a diet. It's the way we're supposed to eat. Big meals are actually good. One of the worst things the food industry ever told us is to eat small meals throughout the day. That is a lie. It's absolutely debunked. It has no place in your life. It is no different than a drug user, the example I used. Big meals are fine. Matter of fact, the bro science in the gym has always said that the body cannot consume more than 35, 40 grams of protein in a sitting. Lie. I've been saying that for five years and I just got proven right. December 19th, 2023 in NIH and PubMed, the journals came out and said that the body can absorb well over 100 grams of protein in one sitting. This is massive. This completely crushes the, the small meals throughout the day. Intermittent fasting cures insulin resistance, but what we have to do is we have to shrink the amount of hours in a day and consolidate it to where the body can have insulin. And then the rest of the clock, zero insulin, not low, zero. And over a period of time, our experience shows about two months, but it could be quicker, is your cells become resensitized to insulin. We're gonna break that down more in segment three. Let's go.